Welcome to Live Action Star Wars. I'm James. I'm Ralph. And we're here this week with a bonus episode talking about the Disney Gallery, the Book of Boba Fett documentary that came out last week. Uh, right. On that on that day, it was it was the May fourth. Last Wednesday. Yeah, last Wednesday. <laughs> it yeah. The, the day for Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> I try not to make a big deal about it. Yeah. Yeah. But I was listening to uh, I listened to with Gorley and Rust. It's okay. a podcast about horror movies with Paul Rust and Matt Gorley. Matt Gorley, yep. And they were talking about how cool it is, how cool May Fourth has gotten in the last five years, and it's just so cool. <laughs> it it's it's. I it's, like I like thing. announcements. I like getting announcements. I like those sorts of things. I think here's if, here's if, so this is what I'm gonna here's a little bit of insider thing. Uh, I have a friend who um, works for an online sort of geek news thing, mm -hmm. like a geek news site. They do you know you're it's it's called FN Cool News. Cool. So they do all kinds of geek stuff. And I was asked if I can if I wanted to do a Star Wars article. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, sure. What do you want it to be about? Whatever you want. And this happy happened to ask me on uh, the 3rd of May. And I said, can I talk about Orthodox Star Wars Day? Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I don't want to be negative about stuff. And I'm like, well, here's the thing. And I laid it out for him um, yeah. about how, like, I'm not a fan of May the 4th. I don't mm -hmm. know if, how obvious that is, how that came across <laughs> last week. But for me, there's a lot of things in Star Wars that I'm not a fan of, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean I have to shit on everybody else's parade. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm doing this article based on that. It's going to be released on Orthodox Star Wars Day, which uh, is in two weeks. And we have an episode called Orthodox Star Wars Day coming in two weeks. And I'll mention that indeed. article there. But um, it is uh, it's yeah, I, I don't I don't I personally really, really don't like it. Because I'm an old man, and I, it's a I'm new the thing. same. I'm the same. We've, we've, yeah. you and I have talked about this. I don't know if we talked about it on the show. We talked about it definitely privately. It's when we started the show. We both sort of we had the idea, and we're like, "Cool, yeah, let's release it on Star Wars Day." And both of us, without any ever <laughs> this ever yeah. coming up between us, we we're like, "Cool, yeah, May 25th." Yeah, like, and we we're just uh... like, yeah. and, and we were just like, "Okay, cool, right? We're on the same wavelength with these things." Yeah. Because I, I'm still glad we did that. Our first, our our first episode was May 25th. I am. Um, and, uh, and again, I was so happy. A soul of the movie was re released on May 25th. So I'm like, Oh, it's awesome. It's being acknowledged. Yeah. And then when I heard that Obi-Wan was coming out on May 25th, I was very excited. So I'm like, oh, I'm glad they're honoring the day. Yeah. And then they pushed it back. It, yeah. So I, it's, it's not, I don't like it at all. I don't like it at all. I, but, I, I, I try don't... not to get. I try not to get annoyed by it. Um, I was after it was we recorded tough. last week's last. Yeah, it was. Um, after we recorded, I. I mean, Stevie's over here teasing you about it. Uh, yeah. Liz was te teasing me about it all day, um, and I'm just like, I. I don't feel that passionately about it. I just don't no. really like it for the same reason. Where I was just like, no, the anniversary is when it should be respected and honoured. Yeah. Not not a silly pun. Like because that's yeah. all it is. Nothing is May the Fourth. Um, it's and it's, yeah, I it's... I was in a bar after we recorded last week's episode, and a group came in, and all of them were dressed up, and they were all in like pretty decent costumes for like an outside of a celebration, just for like a, a random Wednesday night out. And so I was like, "That's cool." <laughs> and then on the way out of the bar, I sort of I I sort of just said to the guy because there was a guy in um slave layer like outfit um yeah. boba fett Star starship layer outfit um <laughs> but he had a full back piece tattoo like his entire back and it just made me laugh the contrast of it so much that i went over and i was just like dude i just gotta say to you like the back piece really sets off the the gold bikini <laughs> and and they were all so excited that like someone was acknowledging their their costuming that right. they were all just like Ah, oh, May the Fourth be with you, May the Fourth. And I and I was like, okay, bye now. And I was like, oh. if those dudes, if those dudes showed up in that pub on the twenty fifth, you would have been over the moon. I'd have loved it. I'd have absolutely <laughs> loved it. Yeah, um, one hundred. It's, it's fine. It's totally yeah. fine. And the whole but point... I try not to be. I try not to let it annoy yeah. me. I'm just like, 
let let them have their their day if they want to do that. I as I said, I love getting a new announcements. I love getting trailers and things like that. Um, there's always things announced around then. So if that's a day that they want to pick for that, fine. Yeah, yeah. My whole thing is that there's certain like small businesses and and regular businesses that have jumped onto this thing Mm -hmm. and that's kind of what drives me nuts it's like the it's like you know they say like uh hallmark holidays like this is like a hallmark holiday it's 100 a hallmark holiday yeah it's not it's not something that you know before the last five or six years it was nothing I, that's me what being I was trying a fan to, celebrated on a specific day that's what i've i tried to explain to people i was like this yeah. is such a, a recency thing yeah um and yeah there was a few people that sort of tried to shoot back about that I was like, oh no no i was like don't don't try and come up me with knowledge like that please i don't i don't want to argue with you i'm happy that you're happy <laughs> i'm not yeah. trying to yuck anyone's yum but like it's not for me it, this is not my star wars day right and it, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't want to dwell on it, but that's what no. that's what no, my article was about. I said, I, yeah, yeah, I said I don't want it to be a negative. He didn't want it to be a negative thing, and I said, well, here's the thing: it's going to start off negative, mm-hmm. but I'm going to explain everything I don't like about it. But then it also explain like anything with Star Wars, we all just need to let people enjoy what they enjoy and not exactly. butt in if we don't like it. Exactly. You know, uh, I completely agree. Like, I mean, yeah. I feel like that's what we do. Like, even when we bring up anything in a negative light, like stick with us because within a couple of minutes, we'll probably get back to why it's actually okay. It doesn't really like <laughs> nothing makes sense. Nothing matters. It's all silly space movies. Right. It's all fun. Right. Um, um, that being said, yes. Do you want to discuss this documentary? <laughs> well, I was going to say like, you've got that <laughs> coming out on the 25th, uh, which is going to be great. I'm looking forward to reading okay. it. Um, uh, fingers crossed I can I can do something for them as well over at what was the website effing effing cool news yeah right. effing cool news um so yeah go check out effing cool news um you've got that coming out hopefully by then I will have finished Star Wars Brotherhood which just released yesterday uh, I was hoping to get a, an advanced copy of it so I could have a review up this week uh didn't so my pre-order arrived yesterday I've just started reading it this afternoon gonna be reading it and again for the next sort of week maybe week and a half or so uh, and then i will have a written review and a bonus video up on the channel for everyone to view right and you can read the written review at that is where you can read it it'll be tinyletter.com forward slash james hewlett you can subscribe yeah. there for all my reviews and writing and stuff <laughs> yes and then and then i just, just so you know i updated this thing again <laughs> oh we got another new logo there so now the in between things is actually one of those uh, special characters. Ah, okay. Go, instead of an emoji. So is it one that shows up on YouTube? People on YouTube can let us know right now if you see there a little go. circle with a line through it in between each link. Which, and as then, a special uh, character, does look like something you'd see in kind a Star of Star Warsy. It it's almost looks like Star the Wars. thing on the middle of like Biggs' Ahsoka's, helmet. Or, yeah, yeah, Biggs' helmet. I'm thinking like of the Ahsoka, like fulcrum yeah. symbol. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's very cool so don't visit any of those links or read any of that stuff just let us know if that symbol comes up and then do that want anybody want anybody to do any of that stuff <laughs> this is a bonus episode we've gone 10 minutes about That's other things um yeah it's absolutely fine um the reason that i don't feel too bad about it is because i don't have masses to say about this documentary uh, Lucha Johnny can see the logo. We're good. Okay, we, so the little serp, the little symbols are there. We're sticking with that. Amazing. We're sticking with that. Um, Perfect. yeah, Disney Gallery, Book of Boba Fett. I love that we get these Disney galleries after every yeah. series and movie and things. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do the same with all the Marvel sh- stuff. It's great. Um, it's the closest thing we get to DVD extras, and you and I are both mm-hmm. big fans of old DVD extras. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, if we can get a, an hour-long documentary about something, it's better than a ten-minute featurette that, like, late late era DVDs were just pumping out. Yeah, um, it there's it. Here's the thing: we've gotten Disney galleries. We had a whole like five or six episode Disney gallery for season one of The Mandalorian, which focused on individual aspects of the show. Yeah, and so we got a lot of stuff that we learned in there. We also got the Disney gallery for uh, Mando season two, which was an hour. They uh, did two of them as well, didn't they? Because they did the one oh, they specifically went back about did... Luke. 
Yeah. Right. Right. Once that was out there. Yeah. Um, really cool. Those were really cool. Really yeah. informative. We pretty much have everything we need to know about the making of these shows. Yeah. Until so, they do something different, like, or really like change it. These, the show shot in the volume, like with this right. sort of the, the Filoni Favreau shows, I, I feel like we've, We've got the behind the scenes on them now. We've had yeah, once, we, like yeah, we probably ten hours worth. Made. Yeah, probably about ten hours worth of documentaries. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so with this one, there's really no new information as far as behind the scenes. No, uh, we get we get some insight on like sort of Robert Rodriguez's reverence for the character, mm -hmm. and we get some sort of. <laughs> there's i feel like this is sort of um it felt more like this is what we're thinking in case you had problems with it yeah like it's sort of a problem piece. with yeah like if you had a problem with uh uh luke skywalker making grogu have a choice this is the reasoning behind it and this is what we wanted yeah. to say so about that it was we we did get like an update on the tech the luke tech as like th from the end of season which, two to oh, now which was mostly just people explaining that they yeah. updated it and yeah. got new people like we've seen the result we mm -hmm. know that it's been upgraded and looks great mm -hmm. they really didn't show us how they went about that which i guess is I would have really liked one of the talking heads to have been uh, the the guy, the deep Shamuk. fake guy, Shamuk, uh, who they named in this, not as Shamuk, but they 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 dropped his actual name, who that I've yeah. forgotten. Uh, so he's name checked in this, and they sort of said, "Yeah, like this guy did this online, and we loved it, so we hired him." Great, right. cool to shout him out. I'd have loved to have heard from him directly about like his involvement and how he went from doing that to right working there probably at the ranch sort of thing work like doing it yeah. directly um but we hear about it it's it's cool getting the update and things like that but no new information i wouldn't say but no. yeah it's it yeah. is just sort of yeah it felt like a mood piece it was like a his <laughs> rodriguez and his tomorrow morrison and aren't they just cool guys to be around right um, which, which that stuff is great. Like yeah. the stuff where they're playing music together, the uh, all that kind of behind the scenes stuff is great. Um, the fact that I didn't realize that um, Mark Hamill was so involved. Yeah, yeah. He, the he, they shot the entire episode with him. Like, and they even like the the way that the fans have perceived what's going on is Mark Hamill wasn't involved anyway. Yep. They just got a guy to, to replace him and got a computer to do his voice. But the fact Not. that they had sound on him. Yeah. Yeah. They recorded his line and he's, he's changing deliveries like on, yeah. on his pass. Cause the yeah. way that they shot it for anyone who's watching this, but hasn't seen the documentary is they'd shoot it with Mark Hamill in sort of like a rudimentary version of the costume. Um, yeah. And they shoot it with him and then he'd sort of give his notes and his feedback as well as the director and the writer and stuff. I think it was Bryce Dallas Howard that episode. Uh, for at least uh, one of that them. one was Filoni. Okay, that was Filoni's episode. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course it was. Yeah, the other one was the yeah. Bryce one. Um, so yeah, with Filoni was there and he was giving his feedback and everything. Um, and then they'd do the other path, the other pass of the shots with the, I mean, Luke, uh, Mark Hamill, Matt, <laughs> Matt, yeah, with with I Matt. Think. Um, yeah, we'll but I mean, that. I love how Mark Hamill just refers to him as the stunt performer. <laughs> and I was like, dude, his, his performance capture. Like he's he's doing a right. lot more than just a stunt performer. Um, right. And and it's great because they are working as a pair. They're working as in tandem with each other. Mm -hmm. And so it's 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 Mark Hamill's deliveries, even if it's not his actual voice coming out of his throat at the time. Yeah. But the way it sounds is it wasn't just Matthew Wood mm. punching in dialogue. Digitizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was probably I, I what I say what I think is they they mention in like the articles that he has a a, a complete like audio library of Mark mm. Hamill saying things and then that puts him in the right thing. And I'm assuming that it also takes the inflection that Mark Hamill did on set yeah. um and takes that into account as well. 
I would think uh, so, definitely. Um, there's there's fun stuff with that too, where Rosario, Rosario Dawson got Plo Kooned. She got uh, Plo again. At this point, if you see Plo Koon in a script, just expect Mark Hamill to show up. Surely, right. I like. I right. don't know if they could pull that off again. What's um, funny is Plo Koon's like is like uh, Dave Filoni's favorite. Oh yeah, Jedi. Yeah. Um, he dressed as Plo Koon at a cele- uh, not celebration at Comic Con. Yeah, in the and Giancarlo Volpe dressed as Kit Fisto. Like those are their favorite right. guys. Um, Plo Koon died. We saw yeah. Plo Koon die. Uh, like, so screen. why would you? <laughs> so maybe it's maybe that's part of the di- the diversion. Is like how is Plo Koon back? Yeah, I mean he got blown up on Kato Nemoidia, which this book Brotherhood is all about Kato Nemoidia. So maybe, I mean yeah. it, I wouldn't put it past Filoni to show Plo Koon surviving that somehow one day. But for now, yeah, if you see I'm Plo Koon in in a script. Like it's it's don't expect it to be Plo Koon. It's funny because like Jay and John over at Toy Geeks, they were they were on a couple of data link episodes ago. Um they're talking about Star Wars toys and the state of Star Wars toys and how they're like non-existent, like they're not coming out with new stuff. And I'm like, that's because they keep bringing old characters back. Yeah, you've done these. You can't toys make already. new toys if you keep <laughs> bringing the same guys back. This is like Let's get new characters. New blood, new characters, yeah. I don't want yeah. Plo Koon. I don't need Plo Koon. I mean, let's, let's, again, let's, like, let's... especially with characters that we've only ever seen in one costume. Like, Plo Koon, you're yeah. not doing a new Plo Koon figure because they've already done it and it's going to be exactly the same. At right. least when you've got, like, some of the legacy characters, they might be dressed a little bit differently or they've got a different hairstyle or something. But right. Plo Koon with that mask and everything is like, his, his face doesn't change. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, there's no, there's no head swaps. There's no happy Plo Koon and angry Plo Koon. Uh, I did think it was interesting with this documentary that they really tried to, it seemed, focus on the things that people liked from the series. There's no mention of the mods. There's, no. There's like, they skipped over certain sections of, you know, it would I would have been interested in finding out about the, the design choices of the mod gang and things like that because right. it's that's something that is distinctly different about this show from others um whatever your take on it for better or for worse it is a unique thing for this show so i would have liked some art department stuff we got a bit right of change, and with them not much and with them sort of explaining some of the stuff where fans might have not have been cool with like the the choice that mm-hmm. grogu had to make and stuff like that um this would have been a good opportunity to kind of explain yourself. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a documentary. Mm. You, you want to have new stuff. We've seen the volume. It's kind of cool to see Doug or not Doug Chang. Uh, uh, yeah. Doug Chang. Doug Chang is the, the, uh, the uh, yeah. Yeah. In, in the, the, in the, in the Starfighter. Yeah. That's fine. It's cool. But like, like there's new things. Yeah. <laughs> there's new things in the show. <laughs> show off the new things not just the yeah. rancor like the yeah. there was a whole section dedicated to the rancor which was cool um it was it was really nice getting danny trejo like interviewed right. about that i i loved all of that side of it i right. thought it was really because he's fun. new to the story there's something he's new that to we it, and it's also yeah. and like i've never heard danny trejo talk about star wars before but like he clearly has at least a passing affinity for it so it's right. it's cool getting him in there it's not just I am. My friend was doing this. I don't really know anything about Star Wars, but you know, when Robert asks, I say yes, sort of thing. Right. Um. Uh, The okay. Here's something that drives me nuts. Okay, here we go. And I mentioned it earlier on the Gorley and Rust thing. How they said how cool everything was. How cool May the Fourth has become so cool in the last five years. It was so funny, dude. Um, I highly recommend it. It was on their episode Carrie. Okay. So it's within like the first half. I, hour. I mean, I love both those guys. So yeah, I'll, I will check it out. They do like they're they do like three hour, four hour long episodes. Yeah. They're great. They're yeah. great. But so oh, so here's the thing. And uh Star Wars guy showed up right when I was gonna say something a little bit on the hey, Star Wars guy. I hope you're going well. Um, haven't seen you in a little while. Yeah. We love these. We love that they do these. We love DVD extras and stuff, and so this yeah. is great. Um the one of the first bits we see in the in the documentary um it's it's 
Dave Filoni kneeling where Luke Skywalker kneels and they have a box and in the box is the Yoda's lightsaber thing. Mm -hmm. All they're doing is talking about a box and Dave Filoni puts the little lightsaber in the box and opens it like that. And John Favreau gets so excited and says, that's so cool. <laughs> and I'm like, the lightsaber's cool. Yeah. The fact that they have a box for the lightsaber's cool. But just the fact that he saw both the things, the lightsaber got put in, and as soon as it was opened, he was like, that's so cool. And I'm like, that's interesting. The and then way... later... <laughs> the way I justify that and his reaction to that is he's sort of he's he's seeing the shot like he's envisioning the shot right. and what the reveal of that will be. Not that he's just seen both those things right. separate. He's he's seeing what the audience will see when that box is placed there and he lifts that lid and the reveal of it being Yoda's lightsaber that we know. Um, the the it, that's so cool is that's sort of what I took from it. It's like. Right. he's he's trying to feel it and yeah i i i i've talked about this before and i think i mentioned it on the last episode or episode one with patrick mm. where i said it's <laughs> i talked about cool and how how george lucas didn't make anything cool and of course of course he made something cool but he doesn't, my whole thing is he doesn't shoot it with like reverence. There's things that are happen and we perceive it as cool because it's awesome. It's Star Wars. Yeah. But where Favreau and Filoni come in, I think especially Favreau and even to some extent, Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. They think things are cool. And so they have this reverence for this cool thing and they may linger on it too long. It and, is, it's kids playing with the toys for the first time when they've gone to their friend's house who's playing with yeah. those toys and has been for years. Yeah. In episode one, um, Obi-Wan open or in uh, episode one, in Star Wars, 1977, yeah. Obi-Wan opens up a box, hands Luke a lightsaber. Yeah. There's no, no one's, pa shot. There's no no one's no pausing crazy to go, music. that's so cool. There's, yeah. Yeah. It's cool it because cool. A, the lightsaber's cool and that box is cool, mm. but it's not a moment where George Lucas goes in slow mo, or Punchy. John Williams. John Williams, like, there's no music in that scene. And so, the thing I like about episode one and what I was trying to get across last week was there's a lot of cool shit in episode one. Yeah. But George Lucas never does, rarely does like an insert shot. Mm. He sets up his camera, he does his thing, there's min minimal camera movements. Mm. And it's just like, that's Star Wars, that's Flash Gordon, that's. Star Wars 77. It's there's not a lot of camera. Camera's always locked off. There may be some tracking shots, like with I don't know, Lando walking down the hallway with uh the heroes, but it, there's never any of these like sweeping close-ups. I didn't much mind the spin move. I love in, it in the book of Boba Fett. I don't mind it at all. Yeah, but that's definitely something that's cool. Cool. So Wouldn't you're it be talking cool about that. If this happened. You're talking about the 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 lack of a reveal for the the Anakin saber in a New Hope, and uh, my original point was going to be, or thought was going to be, if he'd made them chronologically, just in a completely alternate multiversal world, if he'd made one, two, three, then a New Hope, do you think that there would have been that reveal shot? Like, or do you know. think that think... George being George, and as you were saying, like he doesn't do those sorts of things, right? It's just we have there. two. We have two close-up shots in the prequels of lightsabers that I can think of. One is Qui Gon's, but that's mm -hmm. part of the story. That's 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 Obi Wan reaching out with the Force and seeing that the lightsaber is still there and he can grab it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the other is. Obi-Wan picking up Anakin's lightsaber when he leaves Mustafar. And that one feels like, oops. An insert. We forgot. I forgot, <laughs> we forgot that he needs to end up with that lightsaber. Yeah. We'll get that insert. So it's, I feel like George is just like, the, let's just then get there's, this stuff there's two that I can if, think of in uh, the original trilogy, and they're kind of similar, where 
there's the one in uh, on Hoth where Luke, similar to Obi Wan, like realizes he's or just, he's reaching out for it uh, for right. his lightsaber in the the Wampa cave, and then there's also uh, Vader. Vader revealing the the new Luke lightsaber and sort of looking at it with some reverence. And yeah. I we we talked about it on our episode for that one about how it's like I feel like he's admiring the fact that it does like look like Obi Wan's lightsaber. Yeah, it has some yeah, of that connective tissue to his old masters, and the fact that he's like Obi Wan has taught you well is him looking at that lightsaber and going, "Yeah, I can see why where you got this design from." Um, so yeah. it's like it's it's context. Um, right. before you you were talking about uh, camera moves and everything, and I've got a point that I want to jump on there. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I just wanted to mention. Uh, another person who was super excited about this was uh, on our Instagram, uh, Liam Collects, who I bumped into, I believe, at a Less Than Jake show in April. Okay. Um, he he had a comment here where he had a permanent smile on his face during the watching of this documentary. Uh, what a legend Tamora Morrison is. Totally mm-hmm. reaffirmed for him that George Lucas took Boba Fett character in the right direction with the prequel era. Cool looking design is great, but also a little one dimensional. Uh, actual substance makes the character storytelling so much more compelling. I agree with that completely. Um, I, you and I talked before Boba Fett and then throughout how always admired the Boba Fett character design, but mm. as as a, a character, never really did anything for me um, right. until. And this, that was kind of that was kind of brought up in Under the Helmet. The we had yeah. another bonus episode of Under the Helmet um, where. Dave Filoni, you know, lays everything out like he had like five minutes of screen time in like between 12 two lines movies or something like if that, a, like yeah, 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 and a holiday special. Like it yeah. was like, yeah, he was a non existent character. And I do like that. Um, Favreau brought up EU, he brought up the extended, expanded universe. Extended I think that's universe. great. I, I'm, I'm, I was a big fan that they are acknowledging that they are pulling things when it makes sense and when it's like yeah. plays into the story they will use some of that material yeah but the opening of this documentary does mention that and mention that F- Filoni essentially mentions Boba Fett could have been the Boba Fett that you know from the books and yeah. the comics and the crazy action figures and everything else but once he comes out of that Sarlacc it's a complete rebirth yeah so it was their excuse to tell a different story than they, what you're used to. They it can create a whole new from, character, essentially. Yeah. So it doesn't take away from the previous canon. You can still have your kick-ass Boba Fett, mm. but he's older and he went through this near-death experience. He came out the other side and for the first time had a family. Yeah. Um, and had and, that ripped away from him. Yeah. So it's... um this is this, you know, everybody wants a badass Boba Fett, but in this part of his timeline, he's trying to retire. He's trying to put it all behind him. Yeah. And so every time he gets out, they pull him back in. Yeah. And I know like I know like fans were probably upset by that, but this this is one of the things that gets explained in this documentary is like this is the line of thinking. This is where we're at. And by John Favreau mentioning extended universe and 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 Filoni discussing that people the fans who the people like trust these two guys saying this is why we did this it's almost like this should have been played before the series was released so that the fans knew okay they're gonna honor so when he comes out of the Sarlacc all week it's because he's been through stuff it's not yeah yeah. yeah. this is him basically a, 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 a career changing point where he's just like you know what? I think it's time that I hang up the helmet sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe like getting Han Solo was that one last big job that he wanted to accomplish. And then he was ready to sort of have a bit of a quieter time. Yeah. Um, I think that's really good. I like the fact that they talked about it in this, how him putting together his, his cadre of people was him trying to rebuild that family that was lost, that it was taken mm-hmm. from him. Uh, with the Tuscans that he did feel that connection with them for the first time in his life and that right. it was only by the end of the series with his sort of 
his freaks and geeks that he'd gathered around him with Fennec and Chris Anton and the mods and the people of Pelgo, the the rest in peace, the Gamorians. Um, like they might bounce, they might be able to bounce. <laughs> Right, like there's a lot of, there's a lot of awnings in Moss Espa. Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> I love my an awning. favorite is when there's lots of awnings and you crash <laughs> through all of them except the last one. You land into on a, and then you roll off and into land. a Meluron cart. Yeah, the fruit. Yeah, um, that'd be great. Ah, oh, that's that's the deleted scene that we need. Come on, that's the <laughs> next awnings. Disney Plus special. Um, the- you talked about you talked about earlier on the the George Lucas locking off the camera more often than not and having quite a still it. and yeah. that to me whenever i think about like a, a still camera of course i think about clerks and i was amazed in this i i was, mm. I was blown away because i had never put two and two together i'd seen the name in credits a few times but i'd never put two and two together that dave klein who shot a couple of episodes of mandalorian and he shot couple of episodes at least of this series of yeah. book of boba fett that's that's dave klein from the viewers universe that's the dave klein whose yeah. first film was clerks as, Rats. yeah clerks chasing, Rats, amy. Those chasing amy and then i think he took dogma and jay and bob off but he came I, back in between i think he might have done dogma he didn't do jay and bob okay he didn't do jay but, and bob but, but still yeah he came back from Clerks too he did like red state he done he's he's done in between that a lot of tv work um, and some indie films and some smaller and then growing in budget stuff. But I like, I saw his face and I was like, holy crap, that's Dave Klein. Like I've, I've seen you yeah. in so many documentaries from growing up as a teenage stoner <laughs> watching Kevin Smith movies consistently. Mm-hmm. Um, like, so I was like, that's, that's super cool to see someone who I got, I don't know. It's almost like you have an affinity for these people because you've watched right. their career grow from nothing. <laughs> You have Dave Klein and you have Dean Cundy, Dean Cundy who Dave. did Halloween. Oh, John oh, Carpenter's cool. Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. He's like a John Carpenter dude, and he's done like these crazy. I don't know how he got roped into Book of Boba Fett, but that's great. I like, would have I, loved to see more between more of the cinematographer guys. Like, yeah, like I, I just I, there's. It's such like uh, there's so much stuff that I want to know about, and they didn't really cover it. You um, always know with these documentaries that you're gonna get Favreau, you're gonna get Filoni, you're probably gonna get Doug Chang, uh, you're gonna get your Rodriguez or Bryce Dallas Howard, whoever's directing right. the particular episodes. But then beyond that, it's like I want that next layer of right in yeah. in season one, the Disney Gallery season one for the Mandalorian. There was a whole mm-hmm. episode on Ludwig Göransson and yeah. the score. There's a new composer for this, John Charles, John Shirley, I believe. Working under name. Ludwig. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I want, like, there, like, there's new music in this. Like, mm-hmm. that's something that could be explored. And different music from yeah. everything that we've heard before. Yeah. You and yeah. I might not have been the biggest fans of it, but like, I'd love to know. I about like the music and the, and the process. I had issues with yeah. the theme. The theme. But, yeah. Which, again, which is weird because that was the Ludwig part. Yeah. Which we've yeah. both talked about how much we enjoy his music normally. Yeah. So it's it's like there's so much new stuff to talk about. I don't need to know more about the volume. No, we got it. I've seen the volume. I'm impressed. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's always impressive. What's the next thing? Yeah. Uh, the next thing is Luke. Mm-hmm. But just. Iterating. Get, at this point, they've got it. They are iterating on show it. Show me like, a guy working at a computer. Yeah. I want to see what they did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to see, like, we don't even get, like, Mark Hamill's reaction to how it turned out. No, that's like, a really it, good point. It, it, looks, it still looks amazing. Yeah. And I yeah. want to know, like, what does Mark Hamill think of seeing him looking like him? I and, mean, like, it's almost cool. to the point where, like, I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't put it past him to say something like, you know, it's not going to be long before they don't need me at all. But I feel like a line like that is just going to be bait for all the people that want to start bringing up those debates about oh look they don't even use the actors anymore they're just computers and it's just like <laughs> I saw the main, what, the like, main complaint the main yeah. complaint was you have one of the world's top voice act, voiceover actors and you use a computer and that made me laugh yeah they kind of have a point but at the same time it looks like they had enough reference on set to know what yeah. his inflections were but it so, also now makes the the credit of like 
at Luke, uh, Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. Like when we see that in the credits, it's like we always have a chuckle and it's like, okay, yeah, that's nice, but it's not. Right. But now it's but just it like, is no, it is. It it's, is yeah. it's him just as much as it's uh, the other guy. Like it's, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And like, the other I thing, think, I think for... it's Matt gets credit as well. Yeah, exactly. It's in yeah. the same way that Peter Mayhew used to get credit for Chewbacca with Junus. Like, okay. Like, yeah. It's, I, I feel like he's, he's there. And I think in, maybe in some of the later ones, he was credited as like, Chewbacca Wookie consultant. Wookie consultant. Yeah, it's like, which is great. Like, and it's it's lovely that he got to have that role. And I hope that Mark Hamill continues in his Luke Skywalker consultant role, yeah. even Speaking long past Wookies. he's doing anything. Speaking of Wookies, we get some a little behind the scenes of Black Chrysanthemum. Yep. Um, yeah, Chrysanthemum. Yeah. What I found was interesting, and I wish they had gotten into it a little bit more. Was the way his eyebrows and mouth are tied to the actor's face. Yeah. I don't know how the eyebrows are connected to the face. It's there has to be some sort of connection, like a uh, reading or something not, that's yeah. It's really impressive. Yeah. And I, I want to know more. I want to see the, the, the Wookiee head without the fur on it mm. to see the servos and how it worked. Cause I thought the, the West world's tear down of the face. sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Cause yeah, like back, see. Back in the 70s and 80s, Peter Mayhew can open and close the mouth of mm -hmm. Chewbacca, and that's it. Um, Warwick Davis used his tongue in the Ewok outfit to bring it to life. Yeah. And now they they can, again, rely on the performers mm -hmm. to emote through the thing. And I want to know how that works. And I really want I, want, like, I mean, gone are the days that. now. Like, I would have assumed that you had guys with remote controls controlling yeah. all those with servos, like we've seen with most other animatronic, yeah. like costumes that are like. And a lot fun. of times, it doesn't really work right. Like, you no. look at the Nemoidians, and I mean, there's only so much they can do. But if you have, it's the extreme the of Darth Vader pointing at the wrong time to the voice. It's the extreme oh, of that yeah. because it's the the facial movements don't really match what say like the eyes are doing or something is sometimes you get a bit of a sort of dead performance with that but if it's yeah if it's yeah the again it's i'm, I'm blanking it's a total on his name. performance by the actor yeah yeah it's more akin to like a uh, andy circus doing performance capture but then with a digital mask over it it's mm. that but with a physical thing it's so I also, cool i also like i think his name's carrie uh, the performer, yeah, of Chrysanthemum. Is it Carrie Jones? A... Is that right? Something like that. I don't know. I I I just like the fact that he was sort of just like a Stan Winston guy or something. He wasn't. He was never really an actor. No, he was probably he was one like of the guys helping guy. build these rigs before this. Yeah. Um, and which is cool because he's going to have more of an understanding of how they work. Right. Right. But for him to be, you know, I mean, he brought this character to life. Great. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. and the fact that he's the one doing the eyebrow emoting and stuff. So like when he's sitting in the, the casino bar, the sanctuary bar, is that what it's called? Um, and he's just yeah. sitting there like all of those intimidating eyebrow moves and stuff is all oh, him. him. Yeah. And so that is like, it's, it's so great. Cause I if it was like... just Chewbacca, he'd just be sitting there. Yeah. More than more than any other company, and maybe it's just because we're exposed to them a lot more, but it does feel like Lucasfilm and subsidiaries, they they bring people up from in-house a lot more. So you're Matthew Woods as General Grievous. <laughs> we need a voice. Here you go. Matthew's just going to do it because he can knock it out. Alia Sakura. Alia Sakura, uh, like uh, all uh, of those. Well, guys. I mean, Matthew Wood again, Bib Fortuna. Yeah, exactly. Like they're all, a lot of times, people that are, just in whatever department that they're like i've got this idea for this and it feels like they're encouraged to pitch a bit more as well so mm -hmm. or if they fit a role then they can just go with it and it's great yeah yeah this and then is... those people can work the convention circuit for the rest of their lives mm -hmm. sounds good yeah because you travel i was talking about this who was i talking about was i talking on here yeah traveling the world and hanging yeah. out with people that want to see you. Yeah. 
people are excited to see you and you get paid to go here there and everywhere like yeah great cool sign me up sounds good to me Mm. um oh i don't have an oversized ewok i took some notes but they're the same the mods were skipped and mark was on set that's it yeah that's that was that was the biggest things that i had coming out of it to be honest right right um I don't, I don't. I don't really have much. It was I good. I don't think I've got. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Listen, I had. A, I had a good time I, watching it. I really enjoyed it. I don't think I'm going to revisit it. I didn't learn anything. Didn't it, learn anything now yet. let me ask you this: Did it make you want to revisit the series? It made me want to revisit scenes. Yeah. And certain sections, I was like, "Oh yeah, that was really cool." Like that train chase was amazing. Um, yeah, I really liked it. I, um, I feel like that second I episode, I think, in general, was was solid. Yeah, I think this would be interesting to shuffle into the Mandalorian. That's something that I would like to bring up. Is they really the, them talking about their inclusion of Grogu and Mando, and yeah. the like the entire progression of their arc in this. When they're talking about it, would be weird if we didn't see Grogu for an entire season of the show. It, the way that they're talking about that is this is season three of yeah. the Mandalorian saga. It's just right. we're, for we're going to focus on Boba Fett for a while, but this is still the third series, which by the end of the show, we were saying on a weekly basis that this which, is part of the Mandalorian. This is essentially, I feel like what they did with the Clone Wars, mm. which is it's not linear storytelling. Mm hmm. We so just you got, I... we just got a big chunk of of Boba Fett, so it would be interesting to go back because it was episode I don't know, the Robert Rodriguez is episode four, um, season yeah. two of Mandalorian. Like, we can shuffle in a couple of these episodes somewhere into yeah. Mandalorian, maybe between Mandalorian season one and two. We can yeah, put the Boba Fett episodes in there, yeah, leading up to the point where he shows up. Gets the uh, armor back. Yeah. It's it's interesting. You and I are both comic book readers um, and have been for a long time. And I don't think it's as bad okay. now. But um, for a long stretch of time, you'd get runs of comics where like they're meant to be coming out monthly. An artist or a writer sometimes might fall behind. And so you'll get guys coming in and just filling in for a couple of months because they don't want to miss that month mm-hmm. to month to month release. That's kind of what the Book of Boba Fett feels like. It's that if this was coming out on a monthly basis as a each episode is an issue of a comic book, that this mm-hmm. is coming out, but they the artist needs a couple of months off. He's Maybe he's got a kid on the way or something like that. And they just need to have a few months to get caught up so that what they can release on a monthly schedule without delays again. Yeah, And that this arc of what would be just the comic book would be called the Mandalorian. And this, they would just have a, an arc out a four or five, six issue arc where it's the Mandalorian, the book of Boba Fett. Right. And it would just be volume three of the trades. And it would just be yeah. about that. And then in there, you've got a couple of big issues or a couple of big, in this case, episodes that do really progress the Mandalorian story that are essential viewing for that show. Because this is all still that show, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to see not necessarily like editing scenes into the other seasons, but full episodes episodes. where they drop in, where it relates to Cobb Vanth uh, and, and all of that stuff. And there's, there has to be online. There has to be somewhere that has this sort of the optimum episode list i mean it would be lovely um, if, if not disney plus had the, yeah if disney plus had the option of making playlists it's something that i've wanted from all streaming services for a long time is right. just let me make a playlist and that i can chop and change shows so i can essentially just hit play and let it run and i might get an uh, episode of this like a chronological that. version of the clone wars clone wars i mean they do it sometimes they'll put out like the collection so you'll get like the ahsoka collection i know that they did for a little while right um, now they have an obi-wan collection they have an obi-wan collection um and it's the Ahsoka collection is great because it picks like key episodes from the Clone Wars in a chronological order, and they could be jumping around in series and seasons and stuff. But yeah. it's it's episodes that are like good for, uh, progress her character. So yeah. I'd love to get more of that. I think that would be very cool. And 
yeah, I, yeah. A Mandalorian in order would be very cool with all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd enjoy it. I think I, think I would. It. And I didn't, really didn't have anything against I didn't. sort of uh, Book of Boba Fett shifting to Mandalorian halfway through the season. I didn't, I didn't really mind it. I could see I why it. people it nice did mind it. But I feel like if you do have this specific like chronological order of both shows that people would be like, okay, like it's a, it's, it's it's a, a side story com- that all converges to this rancor fight. Yeah. It's the common yeah. complaint is people, people, they want to be surprised, but they also want to know what to expect. And I feel like when you, when you drop in episodes of a different show or what they assume to be a different show into what they think that they were getting, Mm-hmm. It's it's that, but they also don't like it when you do something completely different. You can't please everyone, but I enjoyed Book of Boba yeah. Fett. I enjoyed Disney yeah. Gallery Book of Boba Fett. My feelings on both of them are kind of similar, where it's just like, yeah, that was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I In think a couple I of weeks we get Obi Wan. Yeah, and I feel yeah, that's the thing. We're not waiting three years between movies or seventeen years before between like until we get like a special edition. It's like exactly. It's it's great to be a Star Wars fan because there's more Star Wars just around the corner, and then like right after that's probably Bad Batch. I'd say Bad Batch season two. So if you're and not into Andor, Obi-Wan. Andor coming not too long. I'm really excited about Andor. I think Andor's going to be great. Yeah, I feel like Andor is something where it, it seems like an unconventional thing to pick as a TV show. That's why I'm so intrigued. I feel like they must have had a really good idea mm. to want to go back to a character that's you know is gonna just and the fact that we know that it's gonna be multiple seasons and stuff like it makes me go oh is they, it yeah I think it's like three season pickup already they're already shooting the second season um hmm. um it's it's cool I I think it's it could be really good and I love I'd I want to see more rebellion stuff yeah yeah so. Right. I'm 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 pretty ready at this point though to start moving forward past first order. Yeah. And, and the High Republic, everything I hear from the High Republic, uh, Steve's reading them. Yes. Um, right. Is really cool. Everything's really cool. I, and I know, yeah, not like cool like no, opening. A, it's it's a really good. It's, it's really good cool stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. yeah. If I, if that rumored one of the rumored shows is High Republic era um so and, and like i'm good. not i'm not the biggest fan of broom boy but that's a thing that i would like to know more about and just move beyond the past yeah move it doesn't necessarily need to be broom boy movie. himself but that that sort of thing but of... even broom boy would be like this is a kid who is stuck yeah. and he's too young to get out yeah so it would be great to see what everybody wanted from Ray was oh she just figured out the force right away all this stuff. This is your this is your chance to take something that's it's, it's a weird moment in the last Jedi. For me it's a weird moment. It's a weird um, way to end, yeah. But to be like watch a coming of age thing in the Star Wars universe with a kid who has nothing. Give me, give Nothing. me Richard Linklater's Broom Boy, Broom Boyhood. <laughs> That's what I want. Broom Boyhood, make it happen. Linklater makes a Star War. Yeah, but I mean, how does he get out of there? How does he do it? Does he, does he stow away on a on a on rich Ethan Hawke's yacht on on Ethan Hawke's ship and yeah, yeah. Ethan Hawke in there. Hell yeah! Look but at it's Hulk but it's Hulk. like that's interesting because we know the only thing we know about this character. Is he's a uh, Boba Fett starship, uh-huh. and he has a broom. Yep, and 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 a rebel ring, and that's, he likes Fabians. Yeah. So, how does he get out of there? We don't know who he is. We don't know that he's going to die in a Sarlacc. We don't know that he's going to uh, turn into Darth Vader. We don't know anything. He's a blank slate. Mm-hmm. I would I would much rather see them move forward. And not it doesn't have to involve the first order or Jedi. He doesn't know it probably doesn't know what Jedi is. Yeah. He's heard the story of Luke Skywalker, the end. Yeah. Yeah. 
the legend of have him stow, have him escape his 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 pit have him stow away on a yacht yeah could befriend he, yeah, a he kid he who's rich who yeah. it could be it literally any it's a blank slate yeah. and the thing that i i i'm i liked about the mandalorian a little bit more than the book of boba fett is uh the mandalorian was pretty much a blank slate and it took place after return of the jedi so we knew it was kind of an era we didn't know so let's let's move forward i'm ready to move forward i'm excited for cassian andor i'm excited for uh for um Ahsoka. obi-wan mm. ahsoka's good because we still don't know her fate mm. and it's a continuation of the story in rebels we assume which right. you and i are both big fans of rebels right and that's moving forward. Anything moving, moving forward. forward. Yeah. I, uh, uh, even though I love Solo <laughs> and it was a different story, it's still a little backwards. Same with same with Lando. Unless the Lando show going to be Billy D. Williams, um, I it just let's start. Let's start. Let's make more action figures. I want to see Broom Adult. Let's get in a Broom <laughs> Adult action figure. Broom Team. Broom Team. Yeah. Uh, and that might that. If you do a broom boy story and it's great, yeah, I might appreciate that moment a little more in The Last Jedi. There you go. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's what the the <laughs> long, long announced but long forgotten Ryan Johnson trilogy would have been is Broom Boyhood. Right. This this is big. Stevie's um, into Broom Boyhood. I I I like here, no, this is big because I like The Last Jedi. I like half of The Last Jedi. The other uh-huh. half I'm not too keen with. As soon as we came out the, out of the theater, I met the first Last Jedi hater ever. She did not care for the movie and does Instantly. not care for the movie at wow. all. Instantly. Okay. But if, if, if Stevie's into this broom boy thing, then I think that'll make that movie better. Yeah, it, it's not retcon because it hasn't. There's no con yet. There's no continuity to retroactively do. But you can let's do something with it. Build something. Yeah, and 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 move forward. Move forward. I love Star Wars. I love new Star Wars. Let's. Uh... <laughs> Stevie's done with prequels. Not not the not the not the Star Wars prequels. Uh, just prequels. Because, all... because here's what's happening. Uh, next week we are talking about Revenge of the Sith. And I brought up Attack of the Clones, and we cannot wait to watch Attack of the Clones before watching <laughs> Revenge of the Sith for the, the episode. So, yep. Uh, but yeah, she fell asleep during uh, The Last Jedi. Maybe it was during the good bits. But, well, but that's the thing. It's like, it like uh, let let the Broom Boy series be Ryan Johnson's Disney Gallery Book of Boba Fett, where he explains why this is great, why why he made the choices. Yeah, and stuff. So, nah, it should be good. Um, it should be good. Uh, Scott, <laughs> you're looking we, forward to Attack of the Clones chat. Go back to episode five. <laughs> we already like did that. it. I'm just watching it personally before um, we watch jump on Revenge Twitter. Of jump on Twitter and chat with us. Yeah. Um, we're gonna in two weeks' time though. We are gonna be talking about. Is it two weeks? No, it's next week that we're talking next about week. Revenge of the Sith. That's gonna be great. We're gonna have a guest for that episode. Should be a fun episode. Looking forward to it. In two weeks' time, we've got our anniversary, our anniversary special. Our look forward to our celebration that Ralph's going to. That week, also, that week is that week's going to be nuts. We have some packages to open. Um, yeah, on the twenty fifth, they are here. They've made it to the UK. They've made it to Anaheim. That we are going to be opening them live on the air, and we can't wait to do it. Um, yeah. But that is in two weeks' time um yeah let's let's move forward into revenge of the sith (laughs) yeah yeah okay i'm popping this up again um thanks for joining us everybody and uh yeah thanks did this show up oh that shows up at the same time that's cool um yeah we're coming up on our year anniversary and uh i'm glad everyone showed up and have been following us and all this stuff. I'm excited. I'm excited to talk. I'm. I think. I think the 25th is going to be like it's my most anticipated episode. 
Yeah, it should be a good nothing one. against Mark and Revenge of the yeah. Sith. I'm excited for next week, but uh, so a little man. peek behind the curtain. Originally, I was off on the 25th um, because that was we were going to be our first episode of Book of Boba Fett. I am now working on the 25th, but I'm off for our episodes four, episodes one and two of yeah. We have three episodes coming out that week. Three episodes in a week, and then another one the following Wednesday for Boba Fett. But like, mm-hmm. it's it's going to be a crazy week. But that just means that you get more of us and sorry i guess for that, <laughs> that would be, but the thing is we'll be talking about fucking obi-wan obi-wan and then i'm it's sure that shows th- there's gonna yeah. be so much to talk about that weekend we're gonna have to do a, a bonus think episode, episode somewhere two, in there as well i think our episode shit i think our episode <laughs> two episode is gonna all have been to celebration for the first time yeah yeah probably. and we'll have to talk about yeah so all right we great Okay, uh, until next week, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Remember, don't give in to hate. Celebrate the love. Punch it.